I'm not the only person who would like to have a creative job where you get to make the things you want to make while earning money from it. But it's only natural that if you're doing that, the things that make money aren't always the same as what you want to make. And so it leaves us with a choice, right? And about two weeks ago, I had that choice and I'm not particularly proud to say that I chose the money. So here's what happened. So I was talking to someone whose job is to give lots of people on YouTube advice. And to summarize what they said, it was basically find out which of your videos have been most popular and make more of those. And then find out which videos that other people are making are popular and start making videos like that. So this, it really made me uncomfortable, this kind of advice, this idea of following trends and repeating stuff. But the entrepreneur in me said, just try it out, see what happens. Think of the views. So that's what I did. I basically made a tutorial about the real basics of editing, not because that was a topic I was particularly interested in, but because I'd seen that similar videos got millions of views. Now, just like with any mistake, I found a way to justify it to myself. In this case, it was because the other videos were very long and rambly, so I thought if I can condense the information into four minutes, then it was worth making. But probably the main thing to remember is that I was more interested in the views than the actual topic of what I was talking about. So I spent three or four days working on the video. I was kind of dragging my heels a little bit because I wasn't that interested in it, but I got it done and reluctantly uploaded it. But fortunately, the sacrifice was worth it, right? It made loads of money and it brought in lots of new viewers, except it didn't, right? None of that's true. It was actually turned out to be one of the least popular videos probably in the last about seven months or so. See, when you sacrifice your creative interests for a financial opportunity, you'd better hope it delivers on the financial because that's all you've got left. I think Seth Godin summed it up well on a blog post last week. The intelligent writer who dumbs down her work in order to make it more popular. The interesting website that stops caring about content so it can focus on clicks. The happy kid who abandons good friends in a search to be the cool kid instead. It sounds familiar, right? We can all think of someone who seems to be selling out or only doing it for the money. So I guess this video from two weeks ago really was a wake-up call for me. Not the first one, I'm sure it won't be the last, but just to remind me that I don't want money to be the primary reason why I'm making things. Now, I'm not pretending that I'm so zen and artistic that I just make whatever I want to make and I don't even consider money. It's like, no, money is useful. I would say that I like it. Um, very few people have the luxury of being able to just work on whatever they want to make without even thinking about the money. And you can bet that every single one of those people started out taking any old crappy job so they could pay their bills. So I guess what we want is the middle ground, where we're not just a trend chasing, money grabbing entrepreneur, but at the same time, we're not just an artist who can't afford to pay for food. We want to be somewhere in the middle. Like you might be someone who's shot weddings for a couple years and kind of got a bit comfortable, is financially stable, is consistent, but you've always wanted to make narrative films. So it would be a, you'd have to risk that financial security to pursue that creative opportunity. Or maybe we're always trying to think of ideas that could go viral or that could do well in the festival circuit rather than actually thinking about what we really care about, think about what we feel like we need to make. Now I've already talked about one of the times where money was definitely the top priority, but there have been other cases where it definitely wasn't. Like, for example, there's this one video that came not from researching into what would be popular, 
but instead it was just something that I'd been grappling with right here's the video in case you want to watch it but it was basically if I if I wasn't scared of sounding pretentious I would say it came from the heart right it was personal it it it's something that I deeply believed in now funnily enough that video was also one of the least successful videos in terms of view counts but you know I really didn't mind that time because when I was making it I felt like I was doing something really meaningful and I, it was much easier to spend time on it and I cared about the message so much that I was happy even if just a few people saw it you know so if you'd like to compare the two videos I'll leave them below I certainly know which ones I prefer but that doesn't mean that everyone will and I guess the moral of this story is that there are two parts to a creative career there's the creative side and there's the career side and I think it's important to remember which one of those comes first <laughs>